Today I want to tell you how you can be more confident, more clear, and more persuasive on your sales calls when you speak to parents over the phone. I truly believe this episode that I'm giving you here for free can be worth six figures per year easy if you execute what I talk about. First, I want to open this episode with a story. So a couple summers ago, I was out at the fields getting ready for my training sessions. And there was a boy that was in my program at the time. He was uh, 14. So this was actually like four years ago. 14 years old at the time. And uh, I get out there. I'm setting up. And I notice, I look across the field, he's out there running sprints. And I always get out to the field, typically a half hour, maybe even more, sometimes more, before my clients show up. Because I always like to prepare, I like to make sure everything is set up the way I want it to be. So this way when clients get there, it's already organized, it's already detailed. And I look across the field and I, and I notice one of the kids that I train is out there doing sprints by himself. And keep in mind, I live in Texas. The summers are hot, very hot. He's out there doing sprints, doing push-ups. No one's telling him what to do. He is just on a mission at 14 years old. And I look around and I'm like, where are his parents at? Because like, they, did they just drop him off and leave? And I ran over there. And I approached him and I said, hey, man, like, awesome job. Like, this is great seeing you here early. Why are you? And I, and I go, why are you here so early? Like, I knew why he was there, but I wanted him to tell me. And he goes, coach, I'm going to play in college. I'm going to get a scholarship. And I know I need to get fitter in order to do this. If I want to get recruited, I know I need to get fitter. I said, awesome. It's exactly what you need to be doing. So keep doing this. And I told him, I go, I will never ask you to show up early. But if you show up early and you're here when I'm here, I will spend more time training you. Deal? We shook hands. And off he went. Next week, showed up. Boom. He's there before I get there. Ready. All right. Keep in mind, I'm doing this for free. I'm not charging him. Like I'm doing this because I know, I know how driven he is, and it was his decision, not his parents' decision. Now, fast forward to today. This is you know four, that was four years ago. He has a scholarship. He has a full scholarship, and it's because of the work that he put in. It was the reps that he put in. And here's the thing, if you're listening to this, I'm assuming you're a coach, and you always talk to the kids about getting reps. You talk to them about doing more. And the way that this story ties into you and into your business, it is because if you are not confident talking to parents over the phone, it's because you have not gotten enough reps. And you're not confident with your process. And the only person who can do that is you. For example, the kid that I just told you about. I did not force him to show up there. All right? Never never once forced him to, to, to show up early. Like, and for four years, literally, he showed up every single every single day that we had our session, showed up early. Doing doing more work. That extra half hour. 30, 45 minutes of extra time that he got every single week separated himself from a lot of kids who weren't doing that. And again, he started doing that when he was 14. I see a lot of coaches that are in their 20s, 30s, and 40s that won't put the time in to get the reps on calls because they are afraid of rejection. And now, this is like a very 
tactical type of of message here because this is what we do in our program. It's coaches that follow through with this. This is this is why they are getting better at closing clients, right? So first, you have to know what your standards are as a coach. If if your standards are really high, then you automatically you attract people who are serious. If your standards are low, you're going to attract people who don't care as much. For example, if if uh, let's say your program is is it's like overly affordable and you know it, or parents are negotiating with you all the time and you're sick of that. Well, you don't have high standards right now. Or if people are missing sessions right now, you, your standards are not high. Like if they're canceling last second, if you don't have any policies in place, standards aren't high, right? And that what that does is it messes with your head because it makes you not want to talk to new people and it makes you not secretly it makes you not want to grow your business because you're afraid of getting more bad clients. So first you have to change your standards. You have to raise them. Then you need an agreement. Like you need something that parents can sign when they sign up for a program s- stating what their commitment is and what your commitment is and how your business operates when certain things happen. So this way there's zero gray area. Once they enroll, they're in. All right. Now, uncommitted people, if they see an agreement, they're not going to do it, all right? And my question is always, well, why would you want to train uncommitted clients? Like, what's the point? Like, you getting that extra $100 or, or $200 that month from one client who's uncommitted, that actually hurts your business because you could have spent that time working with someone else who is committed, or you could have spent that time doing something that's more productive than that $200, most people don't look at it that way, though. They'd rather just take the money and work with whoever. And the most successful coaches that I've spoken with, the most successful coaches that I have uh, interviewed, the most successful coaches that I've worked with, guys that like they they generate millions of dollars in their career of coaching, they don't operate that way. All right, they operate where there are systems in place. So first, high standards. All right, so we can attract the right type of person. Second, you want to have an agreement that states your commitment, states their commitment. They have to agree to it. Third, you need to be able to like look at sales as like a science project. And I really mean this. It needs to be like, okay, before I get on the call, how am I, like, where, what room am I going to be in? Like, and you have a routine. Like, how am I scheduling this call? Who is calling who? Am I calling them? Am, are they calling me? Like, how am I calling them? Am I calling them on Zoom? Am I doing it on the phone? How am I, you know, what questions am I going to ask? What's the, what's the objective of the call? Is it for me to sell my program or are we selling an evaluation? Like, what happens at the, at the end of the call? Am I recording the call? Am I understanding what the objections are? Am I writing things down? Do I have notes? Do I have a spreadsheet? So all of these things that I'm talking about, we we do this in our program for coaches that are serious. And and it's amazing. If if you follow what we do on Instagram, you'll see coaches that we work with, they're closing like $2,000, $3,000, $4,000, $5,000 deals. And it's not because of like luck it's because they're now getting more reps but now they have systems in place to get higher paying clients right and i will tell you you don't have to be the best person in the world on the phone like sales is not about you selling anything it's about attracting the right type of person and asking them questions and qualifying them because sales is not about you it's about can you solve the problem yes or no and you don't understand what the problem is if you're just trying to sell on the phone. You, you understand what the problem is when you ask the right questions, right? And that's very clear. Like if you just get on a call and you just talk about the benefits and, and where you played college basketball and, and how you scored 45 points per game in high school, like no one cares about that. 
they only care can you solve their kid's problem yes or no and you don't know what that is unless you ask about what their kids problems are right or you already just have this reputation that that speaks for yourself and people are just hunting you down because they know how great your program is right and again that happens as you get more results in this business and as you get more results the, the word of mouth starts spreading and you you would not believe the amount of people i've spoken to the last like two weeks that make over like three hundred and four hundred thousand dollars per year that don't ever run ads and it's because like their programs are great they've been in the business for a long time but they learned sales right they learned sales now when i said approaching this like a science project i mean it because the example i told you at the beginning of this call or at the beginning of this message where i talked about that boy who did all the extra work he has a scholarship now that scholarship's worth like 160k right that's huge he's not going to be in any student loan debt like that's going to change his life when he gets out of college like he could probably start a business and have zero debt like i mean it's amazing right and it's because he put in the work he 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 treated it like well i have this extra time i'm gonna do this and the thing is the vast majority of coaches don't treat sales that way they they're just like well i hope i get more calls this month or i hope i get people on instagram to message me this month or i hope i get referrals no like it needs to be measured and calculated. And you need to know, if you talk to 10 people, how many of those people can you close and have that down to a stat? So you know, all right, next month, if I talk to five more people, I know I'll close two more. All right. And again, if you do that, if you like record yourself talking on those calls and you study it, Right? And this is where it ties back into that example. When you do the extra work, when you study your calls, you improve drastically. Because you'll be like, oh my gosh, why did I say that? Or, wow, that was a great question. Or, wow, like I am getting better at this. Because like, the only way you can actually measure this is if you listen back and do that extra work. And you will see. You will see. You, you, you will do certain things that you will pick up on on those calls and i'll tell you like there's so many little things i've spotted so i used to clear my throat right before i talked about price i used to uh when parents asked me about results and, and this is a long time ago i used to talk about uh i talked too much about myself my coaching this is what we've done right instead of talking about the kids uh there's a lot of little things. I, I used to interrupt parents when they were talking about something that was important. I used to talk over people. I used to talk too much. And it was because I was nervous on those calls. That's that was the thing. I was nervous because I hate rejection. I hated rejection. Right? And I had to learn. And so the only way for me to learn is I had to listen back and be like, gosh, I need to cut that out. So when I get to the next call, that that's not going to happen on the next call. Or like, wow, every time I talk to people, they're really busy and it doesn't sound like they're paying attention to me. So how can I get them more focused? Okay, well, let me switch it to this. Or wow, like why are these people keep calling me when I'm not even ready to talk? So let me have a better system. So these are th this is why, like, I mean, I'm, I'm serious when I say this. One sales call that you have with one parent could could be like a twenty-five to thirty thousand dollar call, because if they sign up for your program, they're in your program for multiple years. They they could literally invest that much money into your business over the course of multiple years, and and you might not be thinking that way. So this is why I want you to approach every single call like it's the most important call. And you learn from every call. And that's how you'll have the confidence to charge more. That's how the, you'll have the confidence to lead on those calls instead of just like, I don't know, 
do what you're probably doing right now, is, which is negotiating. Or you're cutting down your price. Or you're not clear with your pricing. All right? And this is why, again, if you go and study your calls, I have talked about this so much over the past like three years on YouTube. And it's shocking. Like the guys that the guys and girls that we work with that actually do that. And you know, you know where they listen to their calls? Like they just plug their phone in when they're in their car. And instead of listening to like stupid music that is garbage now, they're just listening to themselves how on these calls. And they're like, oh wow, okay, cool. Boom, boom, boom. And they'll like they will make mental notes. And then when they get back to their computer, they're going to carve through that call again and, and understand where they messed up, what they did well on. And think about like if you did that for 30 days, let's say you had five calls this month, which anybody could get five calls. Like I could go knock on five doors in my neighborhood and, and drum up five conversations in the next 10 minutes if I want. Okay. If you drum up five calls and you record all those five calls, you will be significantly better at sales by the fifth call. Like, it is shocking. And what a lot of coaches do, though, is they're, they're trying to learn all of these tactics and secrets about sales. There's no secrets about sales. I, I'm serious. It is, it is you getting reps and you recording and you listening back and you studying and you doing that, that extra work that you're probably not doing. That is how you get really good. And I'm confident when I say this out loud, like I have talked to thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people on sales calls. Like right now, just to give you some, some perspective, right now my goal is to have like between six to eight sales calls per day that I take. Six to eight per day, right? So you can see I'm getting multiple, multiple, multiple reps in every single day, right? And the thing is, I want to do that because I am confident in what I sell. And the only reason I'm confident in what I sell is because I have, like, I look at everything. I, I look back at the calls where I'm like, gosh, like, why did I say that? Well, you know, what were the questions that I asked before that? So I look at everything. I'm not going to tell you to do something unless I actually do it. All right. And I know it sounds like I'm, I'm beating you over the, the head with a hammer here. <laughs> but if you're not going to take that extra time, you won't reach your, your goals. So that kid I told you about earlier, if he didn't spend that extra time getting fit, that extra essentially two hours per month over the last four years, that compounds. That's... <laughs> So many hours, that's day, multiple days worth of extra work that he put in, got his scholarship. And when you treat a sales call like, wow, this could be a twenty-five dollars to $30,000 opportunity here, because it is, if you have a great program and parents stick for a long period of time, it is, that is worth twenty-five to thirty grand. Then you'll probably take it more serious. And I think if you study back your calls, you'll start to improve and that's all it is. Like It's the matter of spending a little bit more time than you are right now. And if you follow the sequence of, of what I talked about earlier when I started talking about the tactics, then you're way more prepared on your calls. All right? Now, here's the thing. I know you might be thinking, well, I want to charge more. I just don't know how much more to charge. All right? And a lot, of, a lot of people ask me that. And here's my response. You could completely change your price on your next call with and have absolutely nothing to lose if you know you're going to be getting more calls that month. Because if you approach that, like the only way to find out with pricing, can I charge more or not, is by asking. Like by going through the process and when you get to the price, you charge more. Like, and... I faced that when I went from $15 per session to $30 per session. Then I went from $30 per session to $50 per session. And then I realized, wow, people are not bringing me money every time. 
So then I went flipped it over to monthly. And I was like doing like $200 per month. And I remember sitting down with the sales coach. He was like, he was like, Ben, this is so cheap. Like the results that you're getting are so much, so much more worth than, than what people are paying. Like he was like, you won't be able to scale this business with this price. And he looked at me flat out and he said, raise your pricing. And again, this is a sales guy. So I was paying him to help me with sales. <laughs> and he was just telling me to raise my price. And I did. I just listened to the guy. It went from $200 to $400 per month. Then we went from $400 to $600. Then we went from $600 to $800. This was for one-on-one -on -one training. All right? And then we had a, a separate offer for group training that was obviously was more affordable. All right? And that was how we... we that's how we significantly grew our program, though. It was getting reps on the calls, getting more comfortable uh, comfortable on the calls, changing my prices, and being willing to have people tell me no. And, there's, and here's the thing. In my career, there's a significant amount of people that I've talked to over the phone that have told me no. And at this point, because I track this, it's like right around... 70% of people that I speak with say no. All right, think about that. That's every, t for every 10 people I talk to, three move forward. Now, some of that is, is because some of those 10 aren't a good fit, and I find that out. Some of those people, they can't afford it. That's cool too. But the ones who do move forward, well, th that's my focus. All right, that's my focus. And I know if you have those types of numbers, and let's say you, let's say you talk to twenty, and let's say, let's say you talk to thirty, you have thirty calls per week, that, or sorry, thirty calls per month. That's one one call per day. Like, that's so achievable if if you're marketing yourself. If you're closing thirty percent, all right. Let's take thirty people times point three. You're, you're closing nine new clients that month. If you close nine new clients per month times 12, that's 108 clients in one year that you've closed. If, if you have it set up where your program is like between 200, or 200 and $300 per month, like you're going to be doing like 200 to 300 K per year. All right. So if I take 108 times 200, it's twenty one thousand dollars per month times twelve. It's two hundred fifty nine grand per year. Okay, if and again, I I'm like I know it sounds loose when I'm saying these numbers, but like I talk to enough people right now that are in the sports training industry that do this sort of stuff. I've done it personally. Like I I'm 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 not gonna like try to fool you here. I've done numbers like that already. I help coaches do numbers like that. There's people I talk to all the time that do way more than that. And the big reason is because of their sales process, right? And once you master that, I, I really mean it. Like you can take your business to a completely different level. And the thing is, is like, I don't want to just relate this to money. But the, th but the problem is a lot of coaches are like, well, I'm so passionate about coaching. And that's great. You have to have passion. Like I'm passionate too, but like I I can't make a living if I'm just passionate about something. I have to, you have to sell, <laughs> you have to be good at that. That's how you earn a earn a living in this industry. And you can't just be passionate. You have to get good at sales. And I know if you're having problems with that, listen back to this episode because I know it will help you. All right. If you have any questions, if you want like actual hands-on help with your sales process, join my program. That's what it's for. It's, it's to help you create a great offer. It's to help you package that up, to help you talk to parents, help you market yourself, help you promote yourself and closing deals where, where parents are more committed and you'll have to change your program in order to make that happen. You have to change sometimes who you are to make that happen. And uh, if you want more info on that, text me at 210-960-5771.
or email me if you live internationally at buildmysportsbiz at gmail.com or just go to my website, buildmysportsbiz.com. Click on one of the tabs. Uh, it's called the Accelerator Program. You can see a video there. You can watch testimonials. Um, right now, like the results are, are extremely good for coaches that are that are stuck into the program. All right. So that's it. And uh, the only way you'll improve is by implementing what we talk about, studying it back, and doing the extra work. Just like the boy I talked about at the beginning who spent the extra time. Now he has a scholarship, right? And as coaches, we always tell kids to do extra work. But a lot of coaches I see are hypocrites. They, they talk a big game to the kids that they train. But when it comes down to their business, they, they turn a blind eye. And they're like, mm, I don't need to do that. I, I'm chilling. I'm good. I have clients. No, you could be doing so much better in your business. Like You have no idea. <laughs> you have no idea how much better you could be doing if you have certain things set up. So that's it. Hope to see you on a call. And shoot me a text if you want to set up a call with me. See you later.